Tip B, Time My Damies, Top Cat here, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is the sixth in a series of seven videos spotlighting the rise of the roaming supers and their place inside of Destiny 2. As a new season has now begun, another seasonal activity does also. These activities tend to chuck a small handful of guardians at a horde of enemies with one yellow bar mechanic gated boss at the end. And needs more about speed and efficient slaying over outright DPS. And due to the power creep, our weapons are more powerful and we eat more incoming damage than ever before. So this has led me to change the way I play a lot of my PvE now. This video focuses on one of the most chainable and practical roaming supers in the game. The good old Tickle Fingers Storm Trance. Arc 3.0 combined the best of all the Stormcallers together. And because we can now tank more damage with this subclass, I feel more confident diving right in there, dropping a landfall on their asses. Then we just blink around the map, zapping whatever foes weren't lucky enough to be granted an instant death, Palpatine style. Now, because of Destiny's stage and room driven encounters, it's often better to have a super for every room over one that lasts super long. So we are using the Storm Trance's Brace, its perk, Ascending Amplitude. This has two traits. The Storm Trunches Brace returns super energy upon the super's completion. Each enemy grants you a stack of ascending amplitude. Each stack will give you 10% of super energy, maxing out at 5 stacks for 50% of your super energy upon super's completion. It's really super spammy goodness. I've often gotten messages with this build from several guardians thinking I was using some type of infinite super glitch, but no. Bungie wrote this cheat code in themselves. It's some of the easiest ag clear you're going to find due to its chaining effects. And because we are regularly busting our arc nut, you'll be farting out orbs for days, which goes a long way for your fellow guardians. In return, the more supers they use, the more supers you can use. It's kind of like a circle of life, however, a circle of death is probably a more apt description. The other part of ascending amplitude is that each target you destroy increases the damage you deal. Now the landfall is a huge chunk of your overall super's damage output, so in an ideal usage, I try to drop the landfall on a major slash mini boss's head, quickly zap some minnows to get the ascending amplitude stack up to five times, so then you can turn it and put some actual damage to the remainder of the diminished health bar of the major. If you are using it purely for low ranks, Feel free to drop that lample directly on them. You get your super so often with this, you never really need to hold on to it because you'll just have another one in a blink of an eye. And what Stormcaller would be complete without an Arc Soul? This autonomous Arc Drone is activated when you pop your Rift down, of course. I prefer Healing Rift myself for dealer's choice. Bungie has recently stated that this guy is getting a buff at the launch of Season 19 and will be doubling in strength. These are already stupidly strong in my opinion, and could possibly become the meta inside of PvE. Also when you are amplified, it also supercharges the fire rate. Electrostatic Mind, defeating targets with arc abilities, or jolted targets, creates an ionic trace. Collecting this trace will not only amplify your arc buddy, but it also makes your movement speed and weapon handling greatly improve. Once you are amplified, when you begin to sprint, you'll activate a speed boost. This might take a little getting used to, but once you do, it is staggeringly quick. For those of you out there who have ever struggled in clearing the swamps in the Lightblade GM, you will cry when you see how easy it now is once this is activated, as you have the speed boost bonus until you stop. I'm running a pulse grenade. This periodically damaged targets within its radius. I think this is easily the best grenade for the Arc Horlock, as it's got the perfect balance of damage, radius and cooldown. And this will play a vital role in our super regen, as one of the easiest ways to generate super energy is pure damage output. Simply put, the more damage we do, the more super energy we gain. So we are going to run Spark of Shock, this allows for our Arc Grenades to jolt targets. This massively improves our damage output as once the target becomes jolted, any damage done to the target periodically sends out arc damage. And what do our pulse grenades do? They pulse of course. So now we have a self-jolting grenade. I've been maining the Weatherhood with this build, 
The Blight It Fires does great damage over time, auto reloads, and is stupidly good on ammo economy. Seriously, since its release, I have not once run out of ammo for this thing. This really goes a long way in all in-game content, and although it is not necessary for this build, it really will excel with it. It's great for spawn trapping hordes of adds. Enemies that predictably will charge full tilt at you just neck themselves, and you can also bounce it around objects for those enemies that are a little bit too scared to face you directly. Our melee will be Chain Lightning, an extended range melee that jolts targets and chains lightning to nearby enemies. Whilst amplified, it creates an additional set of change. This is already really strong in my opinion, but Bungie and the Infinite Wisdom have gone ahead and buffed it by a staggering 50%, which now just makes it absolutely mega. Spark of Feedback, taking melee damage briefly increases your outgoing melee damage. This fragment isn't something you play around, but it really can save your life sometimes. Spark of Ions, defeating jolt targets creates an ionic trace. Now, Electrostatic Mind already does this for our abilities, but I've been running the Tarnished Metal and the Brigand's Law with this build, and now they can both run the perk Vault Shot. Reloading after defeating a target creates an overcharge for the weapon for 5.5 seconds, causing it to jolt on its next hit. This is excellent damage output for wiping out hordes of adds. I run mine with full auto mod, reload masterwork, arrowhead break, lead madwell, enhanced demolitionist and standard vault shot. Enhanced demo is excellent and with the right circumstances you can get a full grenade charge off of a single vault shot application. It's honestly been a long time since there has been a scout rifle that is this dominating inside a PVE. And it's not only excellent on this build, it's awesome for all builds. This combination of the Wither Horde and Jolting weapons decimates enemies, so we will be using both an Arc Siphon mod and a Kinetic Siphon mod to fart out orbs. For our mods, we are using Elemental Charge, Seeking Wells, Elemental Ordnance, and Double Stacking Firepower mods. This will ensure that we are consistently spamming out our devastating grenades. Get a grenade kill, create a well, the well tracks to us, charges us with light, then we hip out a grenade, get grenade energy and return. Each well will charge us twice, so you've got two charges to loop this so we can still afford to use one for direct DPS on a single target without messing up this loop. We have fed ability energy from the well and ability energy from the ionic trace created from the grenade and from traces created from bolt shot. This gives us grenade cooldown to rival the crown of tempests. Bomber reduces grenade cooldown when you plant your rift. Impact induction causing damage with our melee attack reduces our grenade cooldown. And fastball to get those cross map yeets. Spark of resistance whilst surrounded by combatants you are more resistant to incoming damage. This goes a long way to keeping you alive and one of the biggest reasons that Stormclaw's survivability in in-game content. There is plenty of space for whatever dampeners you might require, allowing you to stick out the fight well past what should be your conclusion. In terms of your stats, I've gone for max resilience, then try and get your discipline and recovery as high as you can. In summation, my damies, this build clears house. Tickle finger scares even the most frightening of foes. With massive uptimes, I really do see this subclass rising a lot in popularity this season. With both the Arc Soul and the Chain Melee getting sizable buffs, it is going to be very destructive. Anyway, my damies, that is the build for today. I've left a dim in the description below. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs. If you're new, please consider subscribing. Make sure to ring that bell. And if you've got any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. And until next time, tippy tie my damies, what a tie.